What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, exclusive for YouTube. Uh, we're going to look ahead of the Week 3 NFL Lines. I'm Will Brinson, joined by John Breach as we break down the best bets for Week 3 of the 2020 NFL season. And John Breach, i got to tell you, buddy, last week on this show, we said hit the Bengals over. Bang! Last week on this show, we said take the KC Chargers under 50 Bang! It closed at 47, by the way. So hopefully you listen to this and got value there. I think we said to take the Packers and Lions over. Bang! I don't know. We did pretty well, didn't we? Brinson, we were on fire last week. I almost brought a fire extinguisher with us in case I combusted in the actual flames during the filming of the show. But I didn't bring one, so let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> that would suck. All right, let's get to the game. Speaking of sucking, uh, we'll talk about the Dolphins and Jaguars on Thursday <laughs> Night Football in Week 3. That Look, I said on Twitter, we're not going to complain about game. Whatever football games we get in 2020, no complaints. This is a game you can complain about, even if the, the Dolphins were thinking about rolling out uh, to a tongue of Aloha. Maybe that would make it a little more exciting, but I guess they will probably keep going with Ryan Fitzpatrick on a short week notice. This could actually have some fireworks. The Dolphins put together a decent attempt at trying to take down the Bills, but ultimately got Josh Allen before losing on Sunday. The Jaguars uh, lost a thrilling game to your Tennessee Titans. The Jaguars open as minus three and the over under 45. Thoughts on this game? Well, I can't believe that you think this game is trash. I love this game. You give me a Thursday night game in Jacksonville. We promised we weren't going to complain about these games anymore. Like you said, Brinson, I will take 100 of these games for the rest of the season. Cancel all the other games. Only play home games in Jacksonville. You know what about the Jags, though? I am all aboard the Minshew train. Minshew mania, Minshew magic, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if it's the jorts, the mustache. You should be all aboard, you should be all aboard the Minshew mobile. That's, I mean, and driving it, wearing my jorts, and I'm going to grow this out, shave the beard, have the mustache. Look, when you look at what Gardner Minshew's done the first two weeks of the season, he torched the Tennessee Titans. Uh, both his interceptions were off tip passes, so they weren't fully on him. Uh, and you know what? The Titans were in the AFC title game last year. That's a good team. We saw what he did to the Colts in week one. That's a good team because we just saw what the Colts did to the Vikings. And so I am sold on the Jacksonville offense being good. And then when I look at the Dolphins, they were building that all-star defense. You know, they have two of the highest paid players in the NFL in their secondary defensively. Uh, and they just haven't looked very good. They give up more than 400 yards passing to Josh Allen in week two. Josh Allen had never even had a 300-yard game before the 2020 season started. And now the Dolphins are giving up 400 yards to the guy. So I don't know how I feel about the Dolphins defense right now. Uh, but I can tell you it's leaning not good. So I have to say early on I'm taking Gardner. Minshew Magic to cover uh, as of right now. I think that would be a perfectly fine decision to make. I think the Jaguars have looked a lot sharper than people expected. And, uh, but I, I would go towards the over here. 45. Uh, we see Ryan Fitzpatrick get involved in high-scoring affairs. We know it's a short week. We would expect with all the injuries, and we'll talk about that in our recap show, so check that out, that you will see uh, tired defenses and defenses missing players. The Jaguars are not afraid to get into a shootout. They can't stop anybody on defense. And the Dolphins are actually a mildly competent offense that will manage to put up somewhere between 20 and 27 points. You're just going to need 28 to 35 from the – or I guess yeah. – I guess 50, but at 20, yeah, you know, it is 45. It's not many points. I think this can easily happen. I don't expect a ton of running the ball. So let's go with the over there for me. Uh, moving along to Sunday's action, the Rams and the Bills. Bills at home, minus three, over under 46. Did you see these two teams being undefeated two weeks into the season breach? I, I did not. And you know what? When the season started, in week three, looking at the schedule, this did not look like a sexy game on paper. All of a sudden, you know, welcome wow. to the prom, ma'am. Exactly. You're a 10 out of 10, Rams and Bills. I love this <laughs> game. This might actually be my favorite game of week three. And that over feels a little John, low. the Chiefs and Ravens are playing in week three. Please stop. <laughs> my favorite game of Sunday <laughs> in week three. Uh, since the Chiefs Ravens play Monday and obviously behind the Jacksonville game on Thursday, because as I said, I'll watch any Jacksonville game. But you look at what both these offenses have done. I feel like the over-under is a little low because these defenses are perceived to be so good. But we just saw the Bills defense give up 28 points to the Miami Dolphins. 
And both these offenses have been so good. I could see this game turning into a shootout. Sean McVay has done such a great job this year of redesigning, revamping the Rams offense, players moving all over the place, guys going in motion to take pressure off of Jared Goff. Jared Goff was getting destroyed last year. Uh, he couldn't make good throws under pressure. Well, he hasn't had to deal with that this year because McVay has been an absolute mastermind. Uh, I think it's going to be close, but I, I think it's going to be a shootout. I think the Rams probably win this game. And fun fact, Sean McVay is 10-2 and two against AFC teams in regular season action. So I don't know what it is about AFC teams and McVay, but he's winning those games. So I I'm taking the Rams to cover here and probably the over. Yeah, but what's his record against undefeated AFC teams with a coach also named Sean? Some Sean on Sean action here. Sean of Night of the Living Sean's or Sean of the Living Dead. I don't remember what it is. It's something that's like cool and hip that my brother tells Shaun me. Sean of the Dead. Sean of the Dead. I don't know what it is. And I don't care. <laughs> don't tell me what it is. I don't want to know. I'm just going to reference it blindly. I don't know that I can all I don't know that I can take the Bills laying three at this one. I think they're a very good team. I do have concerns about their defense. I mean, the Jets, like kind of scored some points on them last week as well. And they've only played the, the, the two teams that they played, the Jets and the Dolphins, do not inspire me to believe that the Bills are a dominant team just quite yet. But I think they're very good. And Josh Allen, look, Josh Allen has been fantastic. He has 700 passing yards, more than 700 passing yards through two, two weeks of the season. He is a live MVP option right now. I'm not even kidding. Josh Allen and Kyler Murray right there in the mix. Um, I will actually take... I think I would probably lean towards the under here that looks a little bit high at first blush for me, and I agree with you. I would take the Rams in the spot. The Buccaneers will head out west to the mountains to play the Broncos. Tom Brady taking his talents to Denver. They are a huge favorite early on as we don't expect Drew Locke to play. Buccaneers minus six and a half at Denver over under 43 and a half. I will say with this game, Prince, we all know that I am the resident Bengals homer here at CBS Sports. I'm on the Pick 6 podcast. And as the resident Bengals homer, I have seen Jeff Driscoll play a few games. He is not a quarterback I am going to place any sort of bet on. And we don't know who the quarterback is going to be in this game. It might be Drew Locke, depending on how serious his injury is. It might be Jeff Driscoll. With that kind of mystery up in the air, I'm leaning Buccaneers to cover uh, kind of for two reasons. They're both Broncos-based. Week one, I feel like the Broncos get blown out if Steven Goskowski doesn't miss 17 field goals. Almost like he was single-handedly trying to keep Denver in the game. Week two, they looked a little better, but Driscoll kind of came in, caught the Steelers' defense by surprise. There is going to be no surprise if Driscoll's the starter next week. Drew Locke struggled a little bit against that really strong Steelers' defense. The Buccaneers have a really good defense. I think the Broncos' offense is going to score. I don't think Tampa Bay's going to be able to score much. I feel like the final score will be something around 20, 13 bucks, which means uh, they cover this six, six and a half. Yeah, I would also look towards the under here, I think, at 43 and a half. The, Bronco, the Broncos and Steelers... That game should have gone way under, like way under. And it ended up, I think they ended up with like 47, 47 points. Right. Thank you, John. Um, it went over, but it was all like crap scoring and like garbage time points, like Jeff Driscoll marching them down against the Steelers defense. I, again, I agree with you. I don't think he'll do that against the Buccaneers. And you saw the Buccaneers and Panthers game. If the Panthers defense wasn't the worst in football, that game definitely doesn't go to 48 points. And so, and it also it involved a Leonard Fournette jailbreak at the last second in order uh, for the Buccaneers to win that game. I think you will see a heavy dose of Uncle Lynn in this game. He will, they will pound the ball a bunch, throw, they'll throw it around Tom Brady a little bit, but I, I expect the clock to move and I like the under in this spot. Sunday, uh, the Steelers, the aforementioned Steelers, hosting the Texans. Steelers minus six over under 45. Brinson, you want a fun fact? I know you love my fun fact. I do. My fun facts. The Houston Texans have lost 12 straight games when they've been an underdog of 12 or six or more points, wow. which is what they are in this game. And obviously that includes this season. They've had to play the Chiefs. They've had to play the Ravens. They've kind of beaten up in both games. I do think they're going to be desperate going into this game. Their season I don't want to say it rides on this week because, hey. They were the How many 0-3 teams make the playoffs? I well, that was expanded, the thing. They're, but... they're literally the one team in the last 20 years that, that started 0-3 and ended up making it to the playoffs. So we won't say it's a, their season 100% over, but you're not looking good and you're probably not making the playoffs if you start 0-3. And, and I just don't think the Steelers – I feel like these teams are – close to equally talented i don't think the steelers are that much better six points feels like a lot i i'm taking the texans in the six here yeah i wouldn't want to lay that six at all with pittsburgh and you know pittsburgh 
has been good so far. Like their defense has looked sharp. But giving up the 21 points to the, the Broncos, the way that they did felt a little bit lazy. I could definitely see them tightening up a bit as they, as they, uh, as they head back home. Actually, I guess they were at home uh, this week as well. They, the, the home field advantage, seemed to, like, the lack of Heinz Field fans really maybe bothered the Steelers more than anybody. Um, the over-under here, 45, I feel like that's a little bit low. I don't know. Uh, you know what? Screw it. The Texans stink. I'm taking the Steelers. Give me the Steelers minus six. They lost to the both. The Ravens and the Chiefs are great, but the Steelers are also good. The Texans might just be bad. They will be desperate, but I'm going to lay the points with the Steelers. Sunday night football, the Packers at the Saints. The Saints have not played yet as we record this, so we don't know the total for that game, um, but I would guess it's somewhere in the range of 48, I'll say, because that's you know roughly what you see with these Packers games so far. Green Bay has been involved in a pair of shootouts. They blew out the Lions on Sunday in week two after uh, getting involved in a high-scoring affair in which they blew out the Vikings. I'm not sure either of those two teams are good. I know the Saints are. Saints minus three and a half in this one, Breach. Uh, you know what, Brinson? The Green Bay Packers are finally playing a good team. I have no idea if the Packers are good. You beat the Vikings, great. So did the Colts. They beat them worse. You beat the Lions, fantastic. The Lions are trash. So I don't know if Green Bay is any good. I know everyone in Green Bay will tell you that Green Bay is good and probably that they're the best team in the NFL. I'm not riding that train yet. And Pete Prisco. And Pete Briscoe, obviously, but the Packers just haven't been tested. And when you look at the Saints, I think their offense is more explosive than Green Bay's. I think their defense is probably a little bit better than Green Bay's. But the one big question mark I have about this game is whether or not Michael Thomas is going to play. If Michael Thomas is on the field playing, I think I probably lean New Orleans here. But if he's not playing, that's a big loss, especially in a game that might turn into a shootout. And I probably have to lean Packers. So this is one where, uh, Get some inside information on Michael Thomas. Lay your bet accordingly. Uh, I'll be taking the over in this spot. I think you're going to see uh, – now, granted, Sunday night football games have not been going over a bunch, and we say this while recording it, uh, in the middle of Cam, uh, Cam versus Russ. So who knows how that will end up playing out. But I do think that, typically speaking, you don't see a ton of points on Sunday night. However, Packers and Saints, I think it could be a bit of a shootout. Green Bay will get theirs enough. I would lean towards the Saints regardless of Michael Thomas' status, but I would certainly – uh, want to wait and see what the line did. Cause I don't think this line is going to get like the six or anything, you know, it's not going to fly out of control in the saints direction. If, if we don't know what the deal with Michael Thomas is and with no saints fans in the building chiefs at Ravens. What a Monday night football game that is. Don't appreciate the NFL give, taking it away from CBS. Cause you know, you got to pay our salaries, but uh, be a fun little watch on Monday night football when we get Lamar Jackson hosting Patrick Mahomes. Oh, Ravens minus three over under 52 and a half. The, God, I don't even know what to say. The Kansas City Chiefs are an underdog. My mind is blown here. This is a team that is covered in 10 straight games before Sunday when they finally didn't cover the spread against the Chargers. Now the sudden the odds makers are just throwing cake in their face and saying, all right, well, you guys are an underdog now. Go do something about it. I'll tell you what, though. Brinson, Lamar Jackson, there's two things that worry me, worry me about him. Number one, when he plays in the playoffs. Can't win in the playoffs. Number two, when he plays the Kansas City Chiefs. The Ravens are 0-2 against the Chiefs with Jackson as their starter. And it seems like their issue is the same both times. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs get off to such a fast start that all of a sudden the Ravens have to slightly change up their offense to kind of keep up. They can't play their ground, pound, run around, uh, run around everywhere offense when you're trailing by two touchdowns in the third quarter. And that's kind of what happened to them in that Titans playoff game. And that's kind of what happened to them both times they've played the Chiefs. Uh, as such, if you are going to give me three points with the defending Super Bowl champions and Patrick Mahomes as their quarterback, I am going to gladly take those three points and bet Kansas City. Andy Reid is, yeah, I'm going to take the points too. It's Kansas City plus three. You're going to give me points with the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> I will take those points. Like you're basically saying like, do you think the chiefs are like the, here, here, the chiefs just have to win. And here's a bonus. Like they just don't even have to, like, they just have to keep it close. Really? Uh, yeah. I'll take the chiefs all day. And I do think you're right. Um, the chiefs should come out a little bit. I don't know. A little bit irritated with how things went with, uh, with Los Angeles on Sunday. They, they struggled against the chargers. They had to win in overtime. The one thing I'll note though, Justin Herbert came in for them and moved around a lot and it kind of gave the chiefs a little bit of some fits early on and throughout the game. So that is sort of a question mark. I think that's probably maybe what's driving the line value or they just said, this is a close game. We'll give the Ravens three for home field advantage. Home field advantage doesn't exist. So take the three points with the chiefs. That's the pick. Those are the picks. The early look ahead lines 
four, and I, I like the over too. 52 and a half, I can just see a ton of points. I mean, like, they're just going to score points in that game. So, I like the Chiefs in the over. Nice little money line dog parlay there with the, uh, with the over if you want to take it. Those are the picks for week three for John Breach. John Will Brinson. We'll see you guys. Make sure and check out the feed for the full week two recap as well as a plethora of other podcasts.